This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, Bruchem Abam, welcome everyone. Parshas Chayisara. It's a very interesting subject tonight. In uh, 1967, so Chai Yisrael experienced the great Yeshua, and many areas of Eretz Yisrael that had not been available to us for decades, for really for centuries, now the land was open, and Chai Yisrael had access to Mekoymos that uh, were not accessible for many, many uh, years, for many generations, and uh, one of the greatest treasures that we now had access to was the Maras Machpela, the, the Tome of the Patriarchs, what Avram Avinu bought for a nice hefty sum in this week's parsha. Now this, uh, this uh, Makoy Makadosh, about which the Zayar says that you could already begin to experience the Kedusha of the Maras Machpelah within three mil of the Maras Machpelah. So approximately within three miles of Maras Machpelah you could already sense the Kedusha. Now for the very first time this area is available for Kla Yisrael to be Lishboich, Tchinaseinu, Tfilaseinu, to at the Makoy of the Kvura of the Ovei Sakadoshim. And obviously, uh, the first reaction of Klal Yisrael was to stream there and to take advantage of the great opportunity. But, but perhaps there should be a certain degree of hesitancy because uh, if you took a look at the early pictures of what the Mar Samachpeh looked like in 1967 when Klal Yisrael had, had access again, so you would see Yidin next to their cousins, next to the Ishmaelim, davening together, the Aguda Achas, you know, and... Uh, the question is, is there anything uh, wrong with that? So you say, well, what possibly could be wrong? After all, it's our makam of tefillah. And presumably, there's nothing that the Yishmaelim are doing, and I may have to use a lot of Hebrew words in this year, just to um, be less uh, explicit. So um, if I don't translate some Hebrew words, you can ask me afterwards, but uh, it will be better this way since it's going to be out in the open. <clears throat> but uh, what could be wrong if you're davening next to your cousin, the Pere Adam, the Yadoi Bakoil? And uh, it's not like Yishmaelim are Oiv Dei Zara. After all, we all know that even in the uncensored edition of the Rambam, the Rambam Paskins in Hilchois Macholois Asurois, we know that if any Gentile is, uh, touches wine, which is not Mevushal, so that wine is Asur B'Shesiyah, but if the Gentile is not an Oyved Avodazar, if he's not a pagan, if he's not an idolater, then the wine is Mutter Bahana. But a Gentile who is an Oyved Avodazar, who touches the wine, the wine is not only Asr B'Shesia, but it's also Asr Bahana. So the Rambam writes, in Hilchos Macholis Asurois, Parak Yonal of Halacha Zayin, V'chein Kol Goy She'enoi Oyved Avodazar, any Gentile that does not worship idols, K'goyin Elu HaYishmaelim, like our cousins, the Yishmaelim, now, how do you translate Yishmaelim? Really, it should be translated as Arabs, but Arabs are not necessarily Muslims. You could have Christian Arabs as well, but we're going to translate it as, as Arabs today, and, uh, but it, it means, it refers to Arabs who uh, profess the religion of Islam. So the Rambam Paskins, Yishmaelim, Yenam Asr B'Shsiya, you're now to drink their wine, Umutr Bahana, but you are allowed to derive benefit from them. The Rambam is clearly paskining that Yishmaelim are not Oivde Avoidazara. And in the uncensored edition of the Rambam, the Rambam writes clearly that the Noitzrim, the Christians, are considered pagan, they are considered idolaters, and therefore their wine is Asr Bahana. So here we have, black and white, the Rambam writes that Yishmaelim are not Oivdei Avodah Zarah, and if they're not Oivdei Avodah Zarah, in their Mizgadim, in their mosques, their mosques would not be considered a house of uh, worship to Avodah Zarah, and one would be allowed to go into the mosques, seemingly according to the Rambam. And in that case, the Maras HaMachpelo, which at that time served as a unified place of prayer, it would, L'Chaira, be permitted for uh, Chal Yisrael to come back into Maras HaMachpelo and daven there again. However, in 1967, after the Six-Day War, So the Gzeira Atu, uh, atu other, uh, other, other, um, But 1967, after the Six-Day War, so the Kloisenberger Rebbe tried to secure meetings with high-ranking officials to try to gain access into the Mara Samachpela, not through the overground building, which, by the way, was uh, built in the times of Herod, but it was built by King Herod. And he wanted to get access through the underground tunnels, because as we know, the Mara Samachpela that we have today, 
The Avais are not buried there on top there where uh, everybody goes to visit. That's, so to speak, on top of some kind of opening. And through the opening you go through a cave. And in that cave there's supposedly another cave. It's, it's uh, Ma'ara, Betach Ma'ara. And that is where the Avais are supposed to be buried. That is our tradition. But the Kleisenberg Rebbe tried to get access to get into the Maras Pela through the old cave about which legend has it. Nobody could get through unharmed and uh, there are all kinds of superstitions and the Kleisenberg Rebbe as we're going to see try to talk Moshe Dayan out of believing all of these legends and all these superstitions. He says it's a bunch of nonsense. Nothing will happen to you if you go in. It doesn't say anywhere in the Gemara that you can't go into the cave within the cave. But anyway, so why did the Kleisenberger Rebbe need to get access to the underground entrance to the Mar Pela? Just daven and go up there where everybody else was davening together with B'nai uh, Doideinu, um, together with our cousins. And the answer is because it was well known that the Kleisenberger Rebbe Paskin in 1967 and I brought in my resident Kleisenberg scholar of Moshe Morgenstern, uh, Talmud of the Kleisenberg Yeshiva and it has a, a Tzurba Merabonon from the Kleisenberg, and his father was one of the closest secretaries of the Rebbe. He's even in the Rebbe's Tzavah, right? If I'm correct? So, so I have to make sure what I'm saying is accurate. The Rebbe paskined that it was not permitted to go to the Mara Samach Pela. And the reason is because the Rebbe said the Yishma'elim are considered Oiv De'avay and therefore the place that they worship is considered a church. A, a tantamount to a base of Zara, and it was not permitted to, not only not, it wasn't permitted to dive in there, it was not permitted to enter there. You couldn't go there. The Rebbe Paskin, you weren't allowed to go there, so he tried to secure a special VIP entrance through the underground uh, cave. In fact, they have now about 22 volumes of the Shefa Chaim, which are a collection of his uh, Chumash Rashi Shirim and his Shalshudas Torah, in the... Uh, I believe the first volume of the Shefa Chaim, the Kleisenberg Rebbe writes that this phenomenon, that the end of days we will not be allowed to go to the Mar Pela, was already foreseen by Avram Avinu in the Brisbane Habasarim. Hafla Vafela. Says the Rebbe, for centuries, Jews, if they wanted, they could by hook or by crook get into the Mar Pela to be Mespalo. And yet, Bedar Achroin and the Ikvas of the Meshicha, when we have so many Tsaros, Avram Avinu already foresaw that we would not be allowed access to the Maras Samach Pela. This is what it means in the Pasuk. This is predicted in the Pasuk. Vayihi uh, Hashemesh Lavoi. The sun was coming. That means the light of Mashiach was about to come. And we were about to experience the great revelation of Mashiach Tzidkenu. And we were right before that time and the Chevli and Mashiach were getting worse and more bitter. And therefore, we would have expected that Klai Yisrael would storm to Avram Avinu and wake him up and say, Tata, Tata, go up to the Kisei HaKov, it'd be Mespalo for us. But no, what does Avram Avinu see in the era right before Mashiach? V'sardeimo nafla al Avram. Avram Avinu was laying in a slumber. You know what happened? Until this time, Avram Avinu was always up, up. We were constantly, no, wake up, wake up, wake up. We were always being ma'ayra Avram Avinu. But in the end of days, Avram Avinu was betardema. He was sleeping peacefully. Why? Because we weren't allowed to go visit him. Because our cousins were there. And they were praying there. And it turned into a base of the Zara. And therefore we weren't allowed to go there. And then you know who had a great a fear? Avram Avinu. Vayihi, Ema. Great fear and terror gripped Avram Avinu that in the end of days, when there is no time that we need him to be more than ever, Avram Avinu would not be able to do so because we couldn't visit him because it was turned halachically into a base of Zara. This is how the Rebbe interprets the, the frightening prophecy of the Brisbane Habasorim of Vayihi Hashemesh Lavai, the Sardema Nafla al Avram, Vihine Ema Chashecha Gedoyla Noifelas Olaf. Okay, so in 1967, this is in Tammuz, very shortly after the war, the Rebbe gets a letter from his Mechutin, the Admir of Zvil, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Zvil, Rabbi Mordechai Goldman, he wants to know from his Mechutin, Dear Mechutin, please be Mechave Daitoi Harama. Please tell me what is your opinion. Is it permitted to go to the Mar Samach Pela to be Mespala? Now, interestingly, before the Admir of Zvil opened up the letter, 
he quickly went to the Mar Sanach Pela to be Mispala, just in case he wasn't going to get the answer that he wanted. And this wasn't the first time he had gone. But after, after he felt that he had been Mispala enough, so he was ready to hear the answer of the Rebbe, he probably had a inkling, he probably, had a, he probably knew what the Rebbe was saying, but before he opened up the letter, he did, he went uh, to be Mispalo by the Mara Samach Pela, and the Rebbe expressed his opinion, a very shocking opinion, and what's interesting is, the Rebbe was not the only one who holds this way, that it is prohibited to go to the Mara Samach Pela. It is us to go to the Mara Samach Pela. And he bases it first on the Chida. The Chida and the Berke Yosef, if you look in the third paragraph, a number four, the Chida and Berke Yosef brings, and actually we have it on the sheet here number, on page three, number nine, that the Chida writes that even though some Paiskim hold that the wine of Yishma'ilim is only usher to drink, but it is Mutter Bahana, if you look at number nine in the second paragraph on the third line, in the fourth line, Ra'isi Chuvas Godol Echad Mirabone Irakadish Yushalayim. Uh, excuse me, if you look in the top, on the, on the beginning of the second paragraph, Amnam Be'ir Oiz Tzion In our mighty and powerful city of Tzion, Kiryas Mayadenu V'kula Aradisa Aminog Lesar Isser Maga Yishma Be'yayin Shalano Afilu Ba'ano The Minog in Yushalayim and the Minog of all over Eretz Yisrael is that we prohibit the wine that is touched by Yishma'ilam. Now, why would it be Aser Ba'ano? It must be the Chida is Paskening, different than the Rambam. The Rambam holds Yishmaelim are not of the Avodah Zara. But clearly, if we're going to maintain that the wine of Yishmaelim is Asr Bahana, it must be the Chida is Paskening, that they are considered of the Avodah Zara. So, based on this Chida, and based on the Tshuva of the Radvaz. So, the, the Rebbe in the Shaos Tshuva is Divrei Yatsev. He quotes the Tshuva of the Radvaz. Now the Radvaz wrote, uh, was, was asked a very interesting Shaila. There was a man by the name of Ruvain. And Ruvain was put to the ultimate test. Ruvain was told, either convert to Islam, or we're going to kill you. And the question is, does Ruvain have to give up his life, al Kiddush Hashem, not to convert to the moon, right? Not to convert to the, to the crescent. And uh, the Radvaz says, on the one hand, why would Ruvain have to give up his life? The Yishmaelim are not Oiv Dei the Zara. In fact, they believe in one God. They're Meyachid Hashem in a perfect Yichud. Not only that, they don't believe that God has any Gashmios. They don't believe that God has any physical form. And they, they believe this very clearly. And anybody who tries to ascribe, hey, after all, we know, you know, the Arabs and the, the Muslims in Syria or in Lebanon, the first thing they do is they destroy any church and they destroy any icon, and they destroy any statue, and they destroy every image, because they don't believe in uh, idols, and they don't believe in icons, and they don't believe in images. So, says uh, the, the question was raised to Radvaz, would one have to give up their life not to convert to Islam? And the Radvaz says, of course one would have to give up their life not to convert to Islam. Because we know, to give up one mitzvah in the Torah, if somebody were to forsake one mitzvah in the Torah, they would have to give up their life not to forsake one mitzvah, certainly to be kaifer in the entire Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu, and to say, no, we don't believe in Torah's Moshe, instead we abdicate our religion and we accept another religion, of course you would have to give up your life to, to not to accept Islam. Furthermore, if you're going to accept Islam, then you're acknowledging that there is a prophet who is greater than Moses. <laughs> and that's uh, against one of the tenets of Judaism. So of course you would have to give up your life not to convert to Islam. And then says the Radvaz, who by the way was the Rebbe of the Arizal, the Rebbe of the Shittim Kubetzes, the Rabbi in Cairo for uh, 40 years, wrote over 2,500 tshuvas. He says, I found in the Ritva. The Ritva writes, and this is the end of number 5, the Radvaz quotes the Ritva, that the Ritva says, V'havi yoidea she'emunas ha'yishma'ilam. The belief in Islam. Even though they unify God, they believe in one God, they don't believe in a father, a son, and a holy, uh, I don't know what. Islam is considered absolute idolatry. And it's Yeharag Val Yavar, because you're being Koifer B'Taras Moshe, and you're saying the Torah that we have it as today is not a Taras Emes. The only time you're allowed to violate a halacha to save your life is if the Gentiles say, violate Shabbos, because if you don't violate Shabbos, we're going to kill you. So you violate Shabbos. 
But if they tell you, violate Shabbos, because Shabbos is not really that important, because God doesn't care, God doesn't never told you to keep Shabbos, then you have to give up your life. In that case, if a Gentile says, don't keep this mitzvah because this mitzvah is not important to God. God never said in the Torah this mitzvah, then you always have to give up your life. So kavachoymer, to say that the Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu is not true, and instead we believe in your prophet, it is certainly Yeharag v'al Yavar. So based... What? So the Rebbe says that if, according to the Radvaz and according to the Ritva, you have to give up your life not to convert to Islam, then certainly you would not be allowed to go into a uh, mosque. Why That's because uh, the Rebbe says that uh, the definition of Avodah Zarah is not only to bow down to pagans, but also to be kaifer and amunah b'ashem is also a part of Avodah Zarah. And therefore we see that you have to give up your life not to believe in uh, the religion of Islam. That means uh, that religion is considered to us pagans, considered uh, Avodah Zarah. And therefore to go into their house of worship would be like going to the house of Avodah Zarah and uh, it would not be permitted. And he explains as follows. Because he says, he asks, why would it be Avodah Zarah? Why would it be Avodah Zarah? They believe in one God. We believe in one God. But what's the difference? So we call God Hashem. They call Him uh, Allah. But my nafgamina, just semantic, just a different word. So he says it makes a very big difference. Because says the Rebbe, the truth is that we on our own, have no understanding and hasaga and comprehension of who HaKadosh Baruch Hu is. We don't know Hashem. We don't really understand. We don't comprehend. We don't have a hasaga of the Rebbe Hashem. Our entire hasaga of Hashem is only because the Rebbe Hashem is Aleike Avraham, Aleike Yitzchak, Aleike Yaakov. If we don't have a tradition that the Rebbe Hashem is God from our Avais HaKadoshim, then we have absolutely no understanding of HaKadosh Baruch Hu entirely. He quotes Rabbi Levi Yitzhak of Bardichev in one of his uh, Chumash Yorim, that Rabbi Levi Yitzhak would say, any God that I understand is not a God that I would worship. If I understand how He works, so why would I serve and worship Him? He's, he's on my level. I understand how He operates. So the, our whole understanding of the Rebbe is because we have a Messiah from Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, and Moshe. But if you don't believe in that Messiah, you're an Oyved Avodah Meaning it comes out according to the Kleisenberg Rebbe, Unless you're a mamin b'tayra u'v'tayr shabal peh, that's automatically avodah zarah. I mean, I don't know what what alternative there would be that would not be avodah zarah. Perforce, if you're not accepting the Torah as we have it, so it's a little bit difficult to say because we know not every uh, one would have thought that a purely monotheistic religion without being shemer tar mitzvahs is not avodah zarah. But he understands that the definition of non avodah zara is emuna b'ashem as God of the Alekei Avram, Alekei Yitzhak, Alekei Yaakov. What? Okay, and the Rambam? The Ra- oh, and what about the Rambam? Good point, because the Rambam says openly that Muslims are not oivdei avodah zara. So he adds this paragraph, the Divrei Yatseva adds this paragraph on page 2 on the bottom right hand side. He says it could be back in the day you had great Muslim theologians and philosophers who had a pure and unadulterated monotheistic religion. And they could explain to you reasonably and with logic that there's one God. But today, says the Rebbe, we see, we see the true nature of the Yishma'ilim. How are they mechanif and meschaber to every in the world if it suits their purposes. They rub shoulders with the Neutzrim. They rub shoulders with the, uh, the Hindu, Hindus. So how could that be? If they're, if, if they're uh, anti avodah Zara, how come they rub shoulders with every single Oyved avodah Zara in the world? That's because today the Yishma'ilim have changed and they don't, they don't believe in one God and they're exactly the same as the Neutzrim today. So maybe the Rambam writes that they're they, they weren't always Oyvdei Avodah Zarah, but today we see from their nature, we see from their character, we see who they're friendly with, we see who they associate with. Their, their religion has changed, and therefore today, the Klesenberg writes, they are considered Oyvdei Avodah Zarah. Furthermore, he continues, that part of the Isser of any association with Avodah Zarah 
is because of the effect that it may have on us. It may, they may persuade us, they may seduce us, they may influence us. So it says the Kozumar Rebbe, if you look at number 6, he says today, where the, the, for, the manner of speech of the Ishmaelim is so smooth and so glib and so seductive, and they're such hypocrites, there's a greater fear that we're going to be influenced by their philosophy, and Chas Hashem marry into them, and therefore today more than ever, it is very important to Paskin that Yishmaelim are considered Oiv Dei Avadazar. Now, this is very difficult, because at the end of the day, the Rambam writes openly, they're not Oiv Dei Avadazar. Now, just, just to take a little bit further, uh, the Kloisenberg Rebbe and the Shef Chaim, in uh, the volume 22, and also in volume 1, he writes, that uh, he saw that somebody wrote a chibur that in order to inspire kavana, some people have suggested, you know, so, sometimes a person feels that it's hard. How, how could I feel like I'm standing in the presence of the Rabban Shalom? So it was suggested by certain chibur that when you daven in Esrei, you should imagine in front of you a blazing hot fire, and in your mind this will give you a sense of ema and yira of the HaKadosh Baruch so it says the Klesen Begur Rebbe, it's apikarsas, it's heresy. How could you attribute and imagine that God is like a hot fire? That's being Megashem HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that one is not permitted to do that. When a person stands before Hashem, all he should think is, Hineni Oimeid, Lefnei Melech, Gadol V'noira, Shu Lamala Me'asaga Enosh. I'm standing before a great and awesome God who's above and beyond human comprehension. But to start thinking, you know, uh, so sometimes people tell, to me, God is like a mighty wind. Okay, so you're apikaris. What do you mean to you, my God? God is not a wind. He's not a fire. He's not water. You have to realize, we're standing in front of an entity that's lemala mehasagaseinu. And that's why we begin Shemana Esrei. Who are we standing in front of? Someone who I don't understand, but is Elikeinu, Elike Avaisenu, Elike Avraham, Elike Yitzchak, Elike Maybe they had a Hasaga of the Rebbe Hashem. But we, like Rebbe Levi Yitzchak says, any God that you are Masig is not a God that you're Oived. And therefore, it says the Shafachayim, it says the Kozim Bergerebbe, again, he reiterating his Psak, that to go to the Maras Machpelah and to daven where our cousins are davening, their emuna today is an emuna of Gashmias, meaning they believe in uh, God has a physical form, and even if they don't say it, and even if they don't articulate it, and even if they want to kill people who claim God has a physical form, but today their religion is considered Avedazara, and it is not permitted to go into the Ma'ara Samach Pela today. And the Klesenberg Rebbe was not alone in this psak, because the Tzitz Eliezer, Rav Valdenberg, Rav Valdenberg quotes a Ran, which surprisingly the Klesenberg Rebbe did not quote, but this Ran is probably the most compelling Maramakam on the Sugya, and that is the Ran says like this. Really inherently, on its uh, un- uh, pure form, Islam is not Avaitazar. But let's analyze for a moment the rituals and the, their method of service, the Ran says. This is a Ran in Sanhedrin Samach Al Mabez. I don't have it on the sheet. The Ran writes, Yishmaelim, Afal Pishain, Toyim Achreim, La Soysim Alakus. They don't stray after their prophet to make him a god, but Hoyl Umishtachavim Lefneim, Hishtachavoyo Shel Alakus. Their manner of service is they deify him, they, they serve him as if he would be a god. Din Avoy Dezara Yeshlahem Lechol Davar. It is considered idolatry. They don't believe he's a god. And they don't believe in more than one God. But the manner that they worship their prophet is, they deify him. Therefore, says the, the Ran, it is considered Avodah Zarah. And therefore the Tzitz Eliezer in Chelek Yud. Now Chelek Yud of the Tzitz Eliezer is a very interesting volume. It's the volume that he wrote in 1967 after we got access to many of the cities in Israel that we didn't have access to. Tzitz Eliezer writes that one is not permitted to daven in the Mara Samach Pela. Amazingly. Except by the area of Yaakov and Leah, which is uh, designated as a base medrash. But anywhere else, even by Avram Avinu, since our cousins daven there. And like the Ran says, the way they pray, even though their belief is not Avodah Zara, but their manner of worship reckons and is tantamount to idolatry, therefore we are not allowed to pray there. That was the Shita of the Tzitzel Yezer. That is the Shita of the Kloisenberger Rebbe. 
However, um, probably this was not the normative viewpoint of most Paiskim. And uh, the most outspoken um, against this viewpoint, against the Kleisenberger Rebbe and against the Tzitzel was Rebbe Vadya Yosef. So interestingly, the first Maramakim that Rebbe Vadya quotes is the Tshuva of the Rambam. And Rabbi Vadya says this tshuva of the Rambam is so compelling. He says that it seems that uh, his Yedid, Rabbi Kusil, Yehuda Halberstam, Ishtamitse, the tshuva of the Rambam. It seems like he perhaps overlooked this tshuva of the Rambam. But Rabbi Vadya says further, in his opinion, the Ran didn't see the tshuva of the Rambam. If the Ran would have seen the tshuva of the Rambam, the Ran would have never said Yishmael Marav Dei Abed Because they're, they're, who knew the Yishmaelim better than the Rambam? Nobody knew the Yishmaelim better than the Rambam. And the Rambam, the Rabbi Vadi says, was, was uh, called Roz, like, honestly, the, the Rambam knew every secret. And if the Ran would have seen the tshuva of the Rambam, the Ran would never have answered Yishmaelim. And uh, let's take a look in the tshuva of the Rambam. The Rambam number 8, the, the Rambam says, that he was asked, are the Yishmaelim oiv de avoy After all, historically in Tanakh, there are three avoy de Zara that I talk about in Tanakh, that it speaks about in Tanakh. Who are they? And all of them were practiced by the ancient Yishmaelim. Number one, Baal Pa'ar. So how, do you, how, how does one do Baal Pa'ar? Don't try it at home. But basically, one would defecate in front of the avoy de Zara. That was practiced by the Yishmaelim. Number two, Markulis. Markulis, you would throw stones at the Avodah Zarah. That is practiced by the Ishmaelim Ad Hayoim Hazah. They have a ritual where they throw stones at the uh, Hog or Hog or something like that. And then, you have Kemosh. Not Moish, Kemosh, right? What is, what is Kemosh? Kemosh, uh, the Rambam says, was that... They would uncover their head and they would not wear garments that were sewn. Anyway, these three Avodah were instituted by the Ishmaelim, practiced by the Ishmaelim, and some of them practice even until today. But the Rambam says, what do I say about Ishmaelim today? Elu Yishmaelim einam klal. They are not idolaters at all. Uchvar nichrasa mi piyam umilibam. Avodah is already cut off from their mouths and cut off from their hearts. And when they unify God's name, when they give Yichud Hashem by their Shalashidas, they do it like nobody's business. You think by you went to a Shalashidas and people were close the lights even? I don't know why you need to close the lights. God gave electricity so we could see. I don't know why you need to close the lights by Shalashidas. If you have a blackout, then uh, okay. But anyway, you think you're Meyachid Hashem? Hashem Echod! Yeah, you should see the Yishmaelim. They know how to be Miyachir Hashem. Yichud Shein Bahem Doifi. Ay, they throw stones at the Avodah Zara. Says the Rambam, no, in Libam Elo Lashamayim. Elu Yishmaelim Ayoim, says Ram. Kulam, Taf, Venoshim, Nichrusa Avodah Zara, Mi Piem, Vitausam, Vitipshusam, Bedvar Macherim. Ay, they have Tipshus, and ay, they have Tausim. We're not going to say what that is, but it's not about Yichud Hashem. The Rambam Paskins at Yishmaelim are considered Miyach de Hashem, they're not Oiv de Avay de Zara, and therefore if they're not Oiv de Avay de Zara, certainly one would be allowed to go into their base at and one would be able to pray there. That is the sheet of the Rambam. I, the Rebbe, the, the, the Kleisenberg Rebbe quoted the Berke Yosef, and the Berke Yosef says, that the Minog in Yushalayim and all, of, all over Eretz Yisrael is Ta'asr, the Yayin of Yishmaelim, Behana, says uh, Rabbi Vadio, what about the last three lines of the Berke Yosef? The Berke Yosef concludes that he saw a tshuva from one of the Rabbanim of Yushalayim, who say that Bezman Hazeh, the Yayin of Yishmaelim, are Mutter Behana. And furthermore, says Rabbi Vadio, <coughs> that Bechlal, they missed another Sefer of the Chida. Because the Chida wrote a Sefer Maris Ha'ayin. And in the Sefer Maris Ha'ayin, the Chida writes, he's Choyzer on his Psaq. Why? Because of the Tshuva of the Rambam. So the Chida, in the Maris Ha'ayin, in the Likutim, at the end of the Sefer, he says, I don't have access to the Tshuva Sarambam, but they have something called the Igroi Sarambam, in the Dutfus Amsterdam. And the Rambam writes that all the Avodah Zara of the ancient Yishmaelim, Markulis, Kemosh, 
and Baal Pa'ar, they're all gone, they're all over bottle, and Bizman Hazah, Yishmaelim are Mechavnim, Libam Lashamayim, and Avodazar is Nichras Mi PM. Therefore, says Rabbi Vadya, um, even though the Ran, if you look on page, let's see what page we're on now. We're on page four. Take a look in the top right hand corner in Ois Dalit. Umeyato Nira, says Rabbi Vadya. The mosques are not considered houses of the Zara. Either Ran, If the Ran would have seen the Ramam, the Ran would never have said that Aramam The Ran knew his Arabim better than the Ran. There's no contest in Arabim knowledge between the Rambam and the Ran. And if the Ran would have known what the Rambam wrote, he wouldn't have said his halacha. And therefore, even though, says Rav Avadya, Ra'isi liyadid nafshi hagoin Rabbi Kusil Halberstam, the Kloisenberg Rebbe, who at the time the Divrei Yitziv was not published, but he published it in a, in a chayveris called Yisrael Saba, even though he writes that the Chida says that the wine of Yishmael Mar Asr no, first of all the Chida writes at the end of that paragraph that, in Yush- that he found other sources that it's Mutter Bahana. And furthermore, the Chida himself uh, was chayzer on this in the Maris Ha'ayin. And even though my friend the Tzitz Eliezer wants to equate a mosque with a church, God should forgive the Tzitz Eliezer, but he's not correct about this, says Rabbi Vadya, b'mechilas kvay terasa imay haslicha, may God forgive his error, it is not correct, because again, because of the Tshuva Sarama. Says Rabbi Vadya, I'm going to cite now a Maramakoim that nobody could dispute, and this will put the, well, we'll make it case closed. The following Shiloh was asked of Rabbi Yitzhak Ochanan Spector. In the Shaos Tshuvas, Ein Yitzchak. They were Jewish soldiers in the army of the, maybe the Sultan or something, maybe in Turkey, and they needed a place to daven. So the general said, no problem, we'll, we'll allow you to pray in the mosque. And the Jewish soldiers asked Rabbi Yitzchak Ochanan, are we allowed to daven in the mosque? And Rabbi Yitzchak Ochanan answered, that since the Torah writes in the name of the Rambam and the Rajba that Yishmaelim are not oiv de'avoy de Zara, it is mutter lecharchila to daven in a mass. Says Rabbi Vadya, mi lanu gadol b'psak then Rabbi Yitzchak Ochanan specter, and therefore halacha lemaisa if somebody needs a shul, so it comes out it's better to daven in a mass than in a shul where they talk. In other words, you have two shuls, one place they talk by Chazar Sashatz. You knew we were getting back to here. And one place in a mosque. Avada, it's better to daven in a mosque. Because you can't daven in a show where they talk. But at least in a mosque. So if you're, I don't know, if you're Kloisenberg or Chosset, I'm not sure. But if you're not a Kloisenberg, it's definitely better to daven in a, daven in a mosque than to daven in a show. But that's the Psaq of Rebbe Vadya. Interestingly, Rebbe Vadya quotes the Ben Eshchai. Ben Eshchai also paskins. Yishmaelim are not oiv de avay de zara. And therefore, one is permitted to daven in the mosque and in the Maras Machpeh. Now this tshuva we're about to learn is like, uh, you could shiver from, from Pachad from this tshuva. This is a tshuva from the Rav Moshe Sternbach, the head of the Ede Charedes. And uh, you know, the Rav Moshe Sternbach was direct descendant of the Vilna Gain. And uh, he is addressing and commenting specifically on the tshuva of the, uh, the Kloisenberger Rebbe and the Divrei Yatsev. So this tshuva is post Shaos to Tshuva's Divrei Yatsev. And he says that I heard the Kloisenberger Rebbe said that one is not permitted to daven in the Maras Machpela. So he says, first of all, today there's separate seating in the Maras Machpela. You have, you know, a shul for Arabs and you have a shul for Yidin. So in the shul for Yidin, it's not used as a mosque. We're not davening together with them. Even though, even the Rebbe would, uh, would be moida that you're allowed to daven there. But, says Rav Sternbach, the premise of the Kloisenberger Rebbe, in my opinion, is a davar tamua. Because we know Yishmael and believe in one God. And they have a Novi Sheker. But, now listen to this. I, but didn't the Rebbe quote the Radvaz that to convert to Islam is Yeharag V'al Yavar? Avad that's Yeharag V'al Yavar. For us to convert to Islam, it's Avoy Zara. But for them to believe in their religion, it's not Avoy Zara. And therefore it's not considered a base Avoy Zara. And therefore it's permitted to daven. So what did the Rebbe hold? Why would the Rebbe say that you're not a daven in a house in a mosque? So says Rav Sternbach, listen to this, this is mamish scary. 
The Rebbe's Svara is very Pashat. Question. Are you allowed to daven in a shul, a so-called Jewish temple, where it's not an Orthodox shul? Are you allowed to daven in such a shul? No. I'm not going to say any names, any denominations. Are you allowed to daven in a shul that's not an Orthodox shul? You're not allowed to. Are you allowed to go in there for a religious purpose? You can't enter. So says Rav Sturmach, the Rebbe is saying very simply, if you can't go into a non-Orthodox shul, then Kavachoymer, you can't go into a mosque. That's it. Well, you, why you know? You have a shul where there's no mechitza. You're allowed to daven in a shul where there's no mechitza? No. So if you can't daven in a shul where there's no mechitza, of course you can't daven in a mosque. That's the argument of the Rebbe. But says Rav Shembach, we disagree with that. Because it's much worse to daven in a non-Orthodox shul than to daven in a mosque. Because if you daven in a mosque, you're not all of a sudden going to convert to another religion. It's not going to have a hashpa on you. You're allowed to daven there. It's not a base of a zara. Elamai, they don't believe in our religion. We have our religion. They have their religion. Their, their religion is not such a deep threat to what we believe in that we're going to say that even though it's not a de zara, but we're afraid that all of a sudden you're going to take down the luchas and you're going to put up a crescent. We're not worried about that. We have, we have our emuna. You know, we, we, we've uh, endured the Mesiris Nefesh, all the threats against us for 2,000 years. We're not worried that if you can daven in a mosque, you're going to abdicate Judaism. But Avada and Avada, you can't daven in a shul without a mechitza. Because you daven in a shul without a mechitza, you're going to become an apikairis and become a min. You can't daven in a shul that's not an orthodox shul. So maybe that was the argument of the Kaisenberger Rebbe, but we actually hold la halacha, says Rabbi Sturmbach, a frightening thought. You're better off davening in a mosque than in a non-Orthodox shul. And that's what we paskin. That's the halacha. That's the halacha, at least according to uh, Rav Sternbach and Rav Avadi Yosef. So this is a very interesting uh, subject. Now, what's very intriguing is, it seems like the Kloisenberger Rebbe really wanted to consider Yishma'elem Oivdei Avodazar. He, he must have had a tam kamas, a hidden reason, why, he's, he's, he wants the Yishmaelim to be considered Oiv Dei Avodah Zara. And as we know, one of the, the greatest attributes of the Klesim Rebbe was he was a Raya Mehemna, he was a very faithful shepherd for Klal Yisrael. He was always being Melitz Yoisher, always trying to defend Klal Yisrael, being Ma'or Rachamim on Klal Yisrael. You know, my, my, my Yedir Rav Moshe would send me the, the, the Megillus Esther laning of the Kloisenberger Rebbe. And even in Mitoich Megillus Esther, he would be Boiched the Mois, trying to be Melech Yosha for Klai So there must have been some kind of reason, a secret reason why, because after all, the Rambam says they're not Oiv Dei Zara, and Rabbi Yitzhak says they're not Oiv Dei So interestingly, in 1967, after he wrote the Tshuva to the Zvila Rebbe, he revisited the issue a few months later, right? The original tshuva was written in Tammuz Tavshin Chav Zayin. Now we're in Tishrei Tavshin Chav Ches. Okay? So we're basically, we're still in 67, but in the, in the Jewish New Year. And in Kloisenberg, on the Thursday of the Aser Sinei Tshuva, it's uh, Slicha, so Yudgimel Midas Harachamim, is a very um, important day in the calendar. The minog in Kloisenberg, uh, in the, the minog of the Rebbe was to say B'tzibor, the whole Tehillim, and to take out a Sefer Torah and to read the Karbonois, like the minog of the Divrei Chaim, the Sanzarov. And the Rebbe would get up and give Divrei Hesoyros. And this now is Thursday, Aser Simei Tshuva, 1967. And right before the Rebbe is about to give a big fiery drasha, he calls the Rosh Hashiva of Sanz. His name, I hope I'm pronouncing this correct, Rebbe Yoshmuel. Shmerler. Shmerler, yeah? And, he could, and the Rebbe um, calls the Rosh Hashiva. Now it seems like the Rosh Hashiva was very involved in writing some of the tshuvas, or at least the Rebbe would dictate to him some of the tshuvas and he would write it. And the Rebbe calls him into the office. And the Rebbe now discusses the shita of the Arachayim HaKadosh about the Yishma'ilam. Because in the original tshuva that the Rebbe wrote, the Rebbe cites the Arachayim HaKadosh and he says, by the way, even though I say Yishma'ilam, the Arachayim HaKadosh says, that the shechita of Yishma'elim is not a shechita tabay de Zara. The Rechaim HaKadosh says, even though when they shecht, they face Mecca, that's not avay de Zara. We, we daven, we face Mizrach. 
So when they shech, they, she- they, f- they, they face Mecca. They want their shechita to be l'ratza in l'fneya like him. But that doesn't mean the shechita is a shechita of Zara. Says the uh, Archaim HaKadosh in the pre tayar if you look at number 13, the pre tayar is Archaim HaKadosh's um, compilation on Yeridea. The Archaim HaKadosh writes that the shechita of Yishmaelim is not shechita of Zara because Yishmaelim are not oivdei of Zara. And the Rebbe calls in Rav Shmerler, and he says, right now, before we dive in the Slichos, and before we're Ma'ira Rachamim, we need to be Kaiveya, and I want to say, says the Kozim Rebbe, that even though Rachayim HaKadosh would be Moide, the Bizman Hazah, Yishmaelim are Oivdei Avodah Zara. So the, the Rashiva is writing vociferously every word the Rebbe is saying, and the Rebbe is saying that Bizman Hazeh, even the Archaim HaKadosh would be Moideh, that Yishmael are considered Oivdei Avodah Zara. And if you look at number 14, we have the addendum of the Tshuva that Rav Shmerler wrote in the room of the Kozim Rebbe, in Tishrei, Tavshin Chavches. He writes that in the third paragraph, the Ein Kol Dar Shave, the Ein Kulam Shavim. And even though the Archaim HaKadosh says he saw Yishmaelim who are not over the Avodah Zara, those were the Yishmaelim that he met, but the Yishmaelim that we meet today, the Yishmaelim in the UN, the Yishmaelim in Palestine, or the Yishmaelim in the Gaza, the Yishmaelim all over the world, they are all of the Avodah Zara. And then the Rebbe um, asked the Rashiva to record this as an addendum to the Tshuva. He picks it up, he reads it, and he says, Now we could read your Gimel Midoy Sarachamim. So the Rosh Hashiva, Rav Shmerler, commented, and this is in the official biography, Lapid I want to thank Rav Gedalia Schwartz. <coughs> Yesterday he, he rushed me a copy, two volumes of the Lapid The Rosh Hashiva, Rav Shmerler, writes that we see that this tshuva that the Kloisenberger Rebbe wrote was not an ordinary halachic hayra. He wasn't writing this tshuva as a regular psak halacha. This tshuva was the Rebbe acting as the faithful shepherd of Klal Yisrael. Right. Feeling that Klal Yisrael was, a, was in an ace tzara. Feeling that perhaps the Yishmaelim have some kind of zechus and shamayim, that they're at least maminim be'kel echad. So the Rebbe wanted to paskin be'bezden shamata, and on the day of the Yagimah Mitzrachimim, that the Yishmaelim are oivdei avay de zara, so that they would paskin this way in the Bezden Shamala as a zechus for Klal Yisrael before the Yom Adin, before their Ma'ur Rachmem on Klal Yisrael. So says uh, the Rashiva of Sans that this was an example of what the Masil Susharim writes, that the great leaders of Klal Yisrael, they take it on their shoulders to put themselves in danger and to, to carry the weight of Klal Yisrael on their shoulders and to be courageous. This was not an ordinary Psak Lalacha. You could see that the Rebbe felt that Klal Yisrael needed him to Paskin so that they go into Yom Kippur, that they are the only true Mamina Makadish. That's a <laughs> remarkable, remarkable idea. By the way, 1970, there was a big fire on the Harabayas, and it burnt down one of the houses of worship on the Harabayas, one of the masks on the Harabayas, and the Rebbe paskind that you have to make a bracha, She'okar avoy de zara mimakam hazach. <laughs> Which is a bracha you make when you see the eradication of hazard. But he said you should make it without shame malchus, and he reiterated his psak that to go to the Maras HaMachpela is not permitted, it's prohibited, because it's considered a house of avoy de zara. Now, in, uh, the, in number 17, we're almost there. The Rebbe and the Shafachayim in Chelek Dalid, in Parshas Vayishlach, he writes an interesting thing about the difference in personality between Yishmael and Esav. Esav, you know he's a Russia. He's hairy. He wears, you know, like in the pictures and the coloring books, you know, he has his gun over his shoulders. Esav is an Esav, is an Esav. You know exactly what he's all about. But Yishmael, he's his... His manipulation and his game is the game of hypocrisy. He makes believe on the outside he's a tzaddik. We know that even Avram Avinu did not recognize anything, uh, anything d- deficient in Ishmael. Sarah has to tell him, you know, he's metzachik. And Avram Avinu has no choice. You know, Avram Avinu says, if I want to eat supper tomorrow night, I've got to listen to my wife and throw Ishmael out of the house. But Avram Avinu didn't recognize that there was anything deficient about Ishmael. Even in the Psukim, says the Rebbe, it says about Yishmael, he's such a tzaddikal, he's like a, a, a bachara learning in the yeshiva, and his parents ask, Nu, you want to get married? And the bachara says, married? 
if Tati, if you think I should get married, then whatever the Tata says, whatever the man, he didn't want to express any, any desire on his own. Kilu, he's above a Kilu, he's a parish from Oilam Hazem. So that's why the Pasuk says, Vatikach lo ima isha, his mommy had to find him a wife. Who, who in the, who in the whole Torah do you find his mommy has to find him a wife? Only Yishmael. Yishmael is such a hypocrite, he makes believe he doesn't need to get married. And interestingly, the Torah doesn't say what happened to his marriage. But if you look in Targum Yonas ben Uziel, even though it says Hagar took a wife for him, but in Targum Yonas ben Uziel, it says like this, Avada, his mother, didn't take a wife for him. He went and he took a wife for himself. Her name was Adisha. And then he divorced her, and then his mother found a wife for him, and her name was Fatima. I think that's a, a traditional uh, Arabic name. Her name was Fatima. So says uh, the Klozenberg Rebbe, even though if you read the Psukim, you don't recognize the, the personality of Yishmael, but Targum Yonus and Ben Uziel, he knew very well what Yishmael was all about. I know that. Honestly? That's true. I don't know the answer to that. That's something that I was thinking about. That, uh, because we have so many Mamari Chazal, that Yishmael is a worse Golas than Esav, and that ultimately we're going to need Mashiach to take us out of Gaul's Yishma. I don't know how that fits into the fact that Yishma did... Now, yeah, they married into each other. By the way, the Gura writes in his commentary to the Safra the Tzniyusa that Esav is Kayin and uh, Yishma is Hevel. That's why Yishma is a little bit better. But uh, how that fits into current events, I can't tell you. But the bottom line is, the, the Kleisenberg Rebbe says, La'amito Yishodavar... You have many people, they think Yishma'ilim are Meyachir Hashem, and they believe in one God, and that's why people mistakenly think you could go to the Maras Machpelah and, pr- and pray together with your cousins. You can't go. Says the Rebbe, Ein l'cha noyafim v'roitzchim kemoisam. He says in the Shafachayim, second paragraph, fifth line. Now, roitzchim ha'kol moidim, everybody, ha'kol yoidim ha'kol ha'kol moidim, menoyafim? Anybody who knows are also hakol moidim, hakol yoidim, that this is also true. Whatever they, all of their tzniyot and all of their modesty is only mibachutz. On the outside they have mila. Esav doesn't have mila. Yishmael has mila, but that's mibachutz. Mibafnim, they took nine kavim of arayas. They took retzicha, they took arayas, and uh, that's the personality of Yishmael. So, back to the ranch. The Kleisenberg Rebbe does not want to go into Mar Pela. So he meets... Moshe Dayan. And he asked Moshe Dayan, look, do us a favor, get us into the other underground labyrinth of the Mara Salah Pela. Don't believe the Arabs that it's spooked and there are ghosts there and people are going to die if they go there. So Moshe Dayan actually let down a little girl on a rope who supposedly had a diagram of the cave within the cave, but they were not successful. They could not find the opening of the labyrinth. The Rebbe tells Moshe Dayan, I will grant you and promise you Olam Haba if you, if you get me in. That's in the lapidation in a footnote. And uh, the Rebbe said, listen, if you don't let us go underneath and you're going to listen to the waft um, who had control of the, of the uh, you should know if you're not going to let us go downstairs, the day will come that they're not going to let us go upstairs. So Moshe Dayan said, what are you talking about? Do you know just a few days ago we were, we were miles from, we could have been in Cairo. We don't have to worry about the Arabs anymore. There's nothing to worry about. And the close workers say, you're, you're, don't be naive. Until they're out of the land, we will worry about them until Mashiach comes. So Moshe Dayan says, you don't understand. The reason why they hate us is because they're in miserable conditions and they're uneducated and they have no money. We're going to establish universities, we're going to establish education, we're going to give them jobs, and then they're going to see that we're civilized people and we're going to get a shalom. Says the Rebbe, I want you to know if you make universities, you make schools, you know what they're going to learn there? They're going to learn how to conduct terrorist attacks. That's what they're going to learn in the universities. This is what he said uh, 60 years ago. So if the Rebbe says you can't go to he wanted to go underneath. underneath. There, were no, there was no underground masks. So it's not considered part of it? Then? No, that was the, uh, the upstairs. That was Ezra's Nashim would be the mask. And downstairs, the, the main floor would be... Um, anyway, and then Moshe Dayan said something to the Rebbe, which basically he expressed that he's not really a mammon. 
The Rebbe said, you're not a mammon? So why in the world do you convince Jews from the diaspora to come to Israel? To be surrounded by hundreds of millions of Arabs? How could you not be a mammon? How do you have the right, how do you have the goal to convince Jews from America to come to Israel and not be a mammon? What right do we have to be in Israel in the first place? Do you believe this is our land? He said, of course it's our land. What's our star? What star is there that this is our land? The star is the Tanakh. So obviously you are a mammon. And, you know, the Ramushnan got all befuddled and all confused, and he said, Efsher, the Rebbe, is right. And the Klesim Rebbe would always re- uh, refer back to the story that whenever a Jew says he's not a mom, he says there's no such thing as a Jew that there's not a mom. Any Jew whose parents stood on our Sinai is our maminim and maminim. They may confuse themselves and they, they, they may lie to themselves, but every Jew is considered a mom. Okay, so bottom line, the upshot is, this was in 1967. I don't believe the Kloisenberg Rebbe went to um, the Mara Samach Pela. So I have over here in uh, this article, they didn't, they didn't let him in. They didn't he, he couldn't go in, he, cu- he couldn't go in. Um, after he told Moshe Dayan, believe me, if you set up universities and you educate them, believe me what they're going to be learning, the next day, or days later, it was Sukkot, and on that day, the Rebbe was sitting with his Talmidim, saying over Sipurei Tzadikim. And an Arab came and threw a grenade into the Maras Machpela. Nobody was killed, but um, many were injured. Be it as it may, um, years later, the Rosh Hashiva of Sanz, Rebbe Yo Shmuel Shmerler, writes, and this is recorded in the Birure Halach, Rebbe Mordechai Shabsi Eisenberger, that this psak of the Kozenberger Rebbe and Lechara, the same goes for the Tzitz Eliezer, was for 1967, when there was one big area and everybody was davening together. But today the situation is different. In the Oyel of Yaakov and Leah, it's only a base medrash. In the Oyel of Avraham and Sarah, it's only a base medrash. And even though the Arabs used to travel through the area of Avraham and Sarah to get to their mosque, but nowadays the door is locked and they can't even go through there. And therefore, it's not considered in any sense a house of Avedah Zara. And therefore, Rav Shmerler Paskins, that even the Kleisenberger Rebbe would be Moida, that today one is allowed to go there and to Davin. Now, this is very interesting. Because if you look up, you know, we all know we have access to Avram and Sarah, Yaakov and Leah. And we know that 10 days a year, we could go to Yitzchak. But it's, uh, it's, there's an equality there because 10 days a year they could go to Avraham and Sarah and Yaakov and Leah. And then they're going to be praying by Avraham and Sarah and Yaakov and Leah. And in that case, if they're going to be praying there, so maybe they're rendering it a Beis Abay de Zara. And even though when we come back we're Matarit, but maybe it's Mechur Hadavar to Davin in a place after it was used for House of Abay de Zara. Yeah, but they're not Kaveya. They come as a Yechidim, but they're, they don't have a, a, a separate minion. In other words, if, if they would come and uh, for a week, a year, set up their prayer, that, that might be a problem. But Rav Shmerler writes that he, uh, he communicated with the head of the Yeshuv in Hebron. And what the Jews do is that for those 10 days a year, they stuff up the room of Avram and Sarah. They stuff up the room of Yaakov and Leah with all kinds of paraphernalia and svarim and echves, uh potato latkes and, and uh, hamantash. And they stuff it up to the extent that they're not able to, to do their tipshus and tiflus in that place. And therefore that ensures that l'chol ha'deos, one is allowed to go to the Mars HaLach Pela Hayoim. But, says Rav Sternbach, even though I disagree with the Kleisenberg Rebbe, and B'zman HaZeh, Yishma'ilam L'Halacha are not considered Oivdei Avodah Zara, but we're going to concede on one point. It's not a good place to hang out for a a good Yiddish Shabachar should not be hanging out in a mosque. If there's one thing you learn from today, I don't think you need me to tell you that. But it's not a place to hang out. So, if in your shul they talk by Chazar Sasha, it's Davin at home, but the mosque would not be a, a good option. But bottom line is, there seems to be a very big machleik as HaPoyskim, whether Yishmaelim are considered Oivdei Avay Dezara, the Klesenberg Rebbe, the Tzitzel Yezer, Paskin, that they are considered Oivdei Avay Dezara. And I think what's the most amazing Indian of this is that it seems the Klesenberg Rebbe was motivated to, to issue this psak for, for the Shmira El Yoyna of Klal Yisrael, but Lahalacha, it seems like Minna Klal Yisrael is uh, like Rav Avadia and like Rav Sternbach,
And Rabbi Vadya writes that for many generations, many, many Gedoilim have, uh, in times of need, davened in masks. And uh, so if you find yourself a chves in Turkey, in the airport, and you need a place to daven, it would seem that one would be allowed to daven in a mask, but not in a uh, multi-prayer room. In other, in other words, if other religions are praying there, one would not be allowed to pray there. But uh, in most cases, we're building a new shul, so we don't have to worry about these things. And... Uh, all of our tefillah should be in a skab of brachim and ratzon. Rav Chanani ben Akash Shemer Ratzon Akash Baruch Hazal Yisrael Lufi Kachim Am Tarmitz Shenemar Adin Ochi Chafetz Man Sikai Yagdil Tarmi Yadir. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.